So now that we have learned about an array of cognitive biases and how they are related to our our decision making and how they can influence good and bad decision making. Now we have that foundational knowledge on which we can start to think about and ref and more deeply reflect upon what is happening in our own lives so we can kind of understand the scope and the depth of the problem, identify the specific areas in which there are problems. And then with that, those pieces of information in place, we can begin to develop action plans to more effectively address those problems that we've identified. So in the book, the author has developed a 30 question self-assessment that each, each of the questions is related to a different cognitive bias. And the guiding questions and the assessment, the guiding question asks you to think about you, whatever system you're looking at, whether it's you, your organization, your family, whatever system it is, and the, and the, um, the history of decision making, how, you know, how things are done, how decisions are made, how action is taken within that system. And to ask questions of yourself and of your team to reflect upon and then place a score on in relation to that question. So it's a percentage score. So what percent of the time is this has this been an issue when in relation to de decisions that have been made? And so you go through and you reflect upon each of those biases, those questions of self-reflection, and then give yourself a score. If you were doing this just by yourself, right, that's one piece of information, one score. Given that I am, you know, myself and trying to get better about and also wanting to influence others in improving this area as well, this would be a good time if this is being done as part of your organization for multiple people within the organization. And I would say, you know, a representative from each stakeholder group at least to complete the assessment as well and then take the averages across everybody. So you can look at individuals and kind of how individuals are perceiving things as well as the group and how those things come together because that's another area in which you might be able to start to find patterns. And as behavioral scientists, scientists, practitioners, we have been trained to look at assessment information and pull, you know, glean information from those assessment results in order to inform our decisions. And so this is a really good tool that covers all the cognitive biases that could be impacting things to give us you know, this baseline of where, or you know, of the snapshot of where are we right now? And then that will lead into the next step, which is to think about how can you get better? And so you complete the assessment, you assign your scores, and then add everything up to get your overall score. So you have your overall um, assessment of the level of judgment errors that are happening within your organization or within that system. And then the impact evaluation asks you to reflect upon what resources that you can commit to addressing the problems which are identified. Um, and so, you know, as, as we talked about earlier, that it's ideally 10 to 20% of your resources will be dedicated or should be dedicated to working in or working on the problem. So kind of, you know, uh, problem solving, talking about organizing, gathering information, 
those eight steps of the problem solving of the um, decision making process and the reflection questions that we talked about during the first lesson, those should be that should be what you know where you're investing. Again, it's ten to twenty percent of resources, which isn't a, it isn't all about money or it shouldn't be all about money. It's the time and the energy and the um, social capital that you're investing into working on the problem. So then the rest of the time, the rest of the resources, you can dedicate to working in the problem actually acting in acting the solutions and doing the things that need to be done. Um, and that, that is a way to create a better balance um, across time. So you know what your scores are, you know, overall, whether you've got a low level impact or catastrophic level of impact um, in regard to your decision-making processes. And then the, and then those scores are further kind of broken out into the domains, um, the competency domains that are reflected by those individual cognitive biases. So the four competency areas are self-evaluation, so cognitive biases related to evaluating yourself, other evaluations, so cognitive biases related to evaluating other aspects or other people. Strategic evaluations, so our ability to um, strategize and think through and problem solve. And then tactical evaluations, which are the actual, the action, engaging in the action plan process. So the exercise asks you to complete the assessment, which, is, which can be found on pages 160 to 167 of the book, or it can actually be downloaded um, through the website for the book. There is a, you know, you just have to, you have to sign up um, and that will be emailed to you. And um, it's also, located within the resources materials for this specific lesson as well. So, um, so you'll complete the assessment and identify the areas in which you are having, you or your organization are having the most struggles. So for me, when I looked back and I thought about all of the, um, all of the decisions that were made and leading up to and during our um, stint as oyster farmers involved in this business venture with my family and all of the issues that we had, we came, I came up with a score of 2290, which is a really big score and it indicates a catastrophic level of judgment errors. And in reflecting back upon like the actuality of the things that actually happened, I can say that this is this is a pretty fair, it's a pretty fair assessment. It was pretty catastrophic. Um, I'm smiling now. I was I was not smiling then. But again, I I really this is what I love about behavioral science, is that it for me it takes out all of the emotion out of it. It's like, yeah, it was really bad. It really sucked. And I would not wish anything that happened upon anybody. Um, but what it does give me is it gives me a perspective about what, um, kind of what was really going on and realizing yet again, you know, another mark in the column of like, you're not perfect. You don't have all the answers. You don't always know what you're doing. Your answer, you know, your solutions aren't always great. Um, and while they might work most of the time, they don't work all of the time and they don't work for everybody. And so um, that's okay. We can use that information now, that self-analysis to reflect upon and plan for a better future. So in 
Um, so we've got a catastrophic amount of judgment errors going on. And when I calculated the average percentages in each of the um, competency domains, identified that the two areas that were scored the most high were self-evaluations and strategic evaluation. So our ability to evaluate the quality of our own decisions and our own thoughts um, and then plan the, um, you know, biases related to planning and organization. Um, and again, thinking about what was going on, I would say, yeah, though those two areas were definitely impactful. We were significantly impacted in a lot of ways in a lot of areas, but thinking about how we as behavioral scientists, as people conceptualize problems and prioritize and thinking about solutions, we need to be able to have assessments like this, as tools like this in our toolkit to help conceptualize problems and prioritize problems. Because if we just looked at the big picture and tried to identify everything that was going wrong. We might find 100 things or 200 things or 1,000 things that are going wrong. Well, we all know that we can't fix all those 1,000 things all at one time. And so rather than just becoming overwhelmed, which we, are, we have a tendency to do, I have a tendency to do, rather than becoming overwhelmed by the scope and the depth of the problem, which then triggers our fight, flight, freeze response, that's when, you know, if we don't have these tools, if we don't have a way to conceptualize it and prioritize things and organize our thoughts, then it can become very overwhelming. But this tool gives us a way where we can just hone in, we can hone in on a couple problems and then make a plan and then make a plan for reevaluation or reassessing. Once we've enacted this, once we've worked to address these core problems, now you know, we can monitor our progress over time and think about, talk about, evaluate what has improved and where our next, what our next step is in terms of continual, continually taking steps in the direction of and in the service of continual improvement.